Hey everybody, welcome to episode 4 of Front Suspension Geometry, where in this episode we're going to talk about roll center. This is where we start to dive in and get in pretty deep with all the details and engineering that goes into front suspension, how it affects your car, how it behaves. So to put this simply, as you change the ride height of your car, as you change your alignment settings, these are all going to play a role in your rolling center. Changing the height of your car through a McPherson strut and seeing this suspension, as I lift the suspension, lowering my car, we're gonna see a change in angle through our two control arm ball joints as we have this wire to kind of demonstrate where this theoretical line is. And then you can see our angle here is also gonna change. This line is run perpendicular with our kingpin inclination or steering axis inclination as some people have said that they recognize this term at. Using these lines we're going to be able to show you what's changing when you lower your car, why it's going to affect how much your chassis is rolling and what you need to do to make it perform better. So in this video we're going to show you how roll center is adjusted, how to measure your roll center, how to measure the center of gravity of your chassis, if you have a low roll center height, what are the effects? And if you have a high roll center height, what are the effects? Why are sway bars important? And what you can do to improve performance if you decide or cannot run one for some reason? But we obviously are going to be recommending that you do run one. Okay, so to start, how is roll center adjusted? Typically when you're buying aftermarket components, you're gonna get what's called a drop knuckle, or that's how it's gonna be advertised. What this means is that the spindle is being raised in the knuckle in relation to its mounting points, making the car's ride height lower and all of the suspension geometry the same as it was originally designed while being at a lower ride height. This is what's referred to as a drop knuckle. This could also be referred to as a roll center corrected knuckle or what some companies may advertise. This knuckle has 30 millimeters of built-in roll center correction or 50 millimeters of built-in roll center correction. This is typically the amount that they raise the spindle without changing any other dimensions. So I'm gonna show you with the display, when you do certain things, how it's gonna change your roll center. And keep in mind when we tell you how to measure roll center, it will have a lot to do with these lines and how they intersect with each other. But first, we're gonna show you that these lines move a lot when you change things of your car. So let's start with the first thing that everybody does when they buy a car. You're gonna lower it. A car's factory ride height is often three to four inches or 75 to 100 millimeters higher than what we lower it to for drifting. So raising and lowering the ride height of your car by an adjustable coilover is going to change the angle that these theoretical lines are going to be at. And it's also gonna change where they're gonna intersect at. And that intersection point is critical for measuring your roll center because this is going to give us our instant roll center point. The instant roll center point is the point at which the chassis will pivot or rotate around. To go along with raising and lowering the right head of your car, also increasing and decreasing the camber of your car is going to change all of these angles as well. As you can notice, this angle is significantly reducing as we lengthen and shorten our control arm. Really interesting point that not too many people are gonna factor in. When you lengthen your control arm, you're actually changing your roll center, even if you have roll center correction built into the knuckle. So all of this stuff is factored in when we design our angle kits. The next thing, where companies typically add or improve your roll center or correct your roll center, sometimes people don't consider it an improvement, is just right here at the knuckle. Lowering the mounting point at the knuckle is where we can get our control arm angle back to where it was originally designed, but have a lower ride height still. So if we lowered our car and we made no roll center correction, our arm could be on an upward angle, which would throw these intersection points completely off, putting our roll center height well below our road surface and this is not good. When we build our angle kits, we put a roll center correction in the knuckle and this is simply lowering the point that it connects to the knuckle and it lowers it in reference to the center of the wheel. So now that I have corrected my roll center to account for my 
lower ride height, I now have a better angle for my control arms to intersect with this line, giving us a slightly higher roll center point. And this is gonna give us more stiffness during cornering. And we'll show you that right after I go through all of the ways that you can adjust your roll center. So on the first example of the display, we have a roll center height. Now I'm gonna lower the car. I'm gonna change my roll center on the knuckle to make it a lot less. And then we're gonna check and see the difference on our display. So we've lowered the car to an extreme amount. You can see the ground level here would be about there on the wheel. Our control arm angles are intersecting at a point that's way over here and super low. And then from there, we still need to draw a line connecting to the bottom of the wheel. This is gonna put the roll center height lower than the road itself and the center of gravity way up here still. And this is gonna completely throw off our roll center. And then to top it off, these guys are not even running a sway bar or an anti-roll bar. So you lowered your car, you removed your sway bar, guess what? You're gonna get a whole lot of body roll. Using this example, you can clearly see that image number one is an example of a high roll center height, and image number two is an example of a low roll center height. The main thing to note between these two differences is the difference between the center of gravity and the intersection point of our roll center. To put it simply, if you have a large amount of distance between your center of gravity and your roll center, you're gonna have a lot of leverage that the body is going to have on the suspension, giving you a lot of body roll and the opposite effect happens when you have a high roll center. The next thing to do in calculating your roll center is finding your chassis center of gravity. Finding your chassis center of gravity is going to require you to corner balance your car and with that there's a couple steps that you need to take to find the center of gravity that we can talk about in a corner balancing video but just to give you a quick summary you're going to need to corner balance your car on a flat surface then you're going to need to raise the front of the car 10-12 inches so that there is a height difference on the front, corner balance your car. You could do the same in the rear, corner balance the car, do it on the side, corner balance the car, and do it on the other side and corner balance the car. This is gonna give you a triangle that you're able to then compute with formulas and determine the height that the center of gravity is at and the center of gravity from front to back and side to side, doing it this way. That's a really simple way to put it. It's obviously a lot more complicated than that. But once you find your center of gravity, you will then be able to determine your roll center in relation to it and how your car is going to behave. Because obviously, if you had the same roll center height as somebody else, but with a different chassis, different alignment specs, or different center of gravity, you will definitely require different size sway bars. You will have different rolling effects. You will need different spring rakes and all sorts of cool stuff. So there really is no comparative way to say to somebody else as what they corner balance that and what you corner balance that and where your center of gravity is and where theirs is because this is information that you need to understand so that you can apply it to your own setup and not compare it to other people's setups. And we're gonna leave it up to you to determine what you need to do to improve the handling of your chassis. But obviously removing a sway bar, in my opinion, is not one of those things that you should be doing. And if you are, the next thing to talk about is what you should be changing to compensate for removing your sway bar. Sway bars are really important. Sway bars use the spring rate from the other side of the car to assist anytime you're cornering, providing a anti-roll, providing anti-roll, providing anti-roll. That's why it's called an anti-roll bar or a sway bar because it's preventing the rolling of the chassis. Um, having a sway bar is a lot better than not having a sway bar because of these angles. When these angles are not in check, the body is able to do whatever it wants to do. And because we're drifting and because we're using tires with compounds, this is where we can throw away the notion that the tires are permanently connected to the ground. And we can say to ourselves, this is obviously not how they are. Tires have slip angles, tires have increase in grip when you change the temperature, obviously the compound and everything else. So if you were counteracting not having a sway bar by increasing the spring rate, this is going to have a negative effect on your performance because sure, your body is no longer rolling because you went from an 8K spring to a 12K spring. This is really common for people to suggest if you're not running a roll bar. But what's happening is when you increase the spring rate, 
you are now going to reduce the grip of the tire because you are going to surpass its slip angle or its maximum grip that it's going to have with that amount of weight transfer. So you're gonna get a bunch of weight transfer when you corner, you don't have a sway bar, you've increased the spring rate, and now there's so much weight on that tire that it's simply just gonna slip. It's gonna understeer, um, and you're no longer gonna have grip on that tire. This is why a sway bar is really important because the sway bar is going to maintain the geometry of the chassis and work with your tires to get the maximum amount of grip. And the great thing about sway bars is they are often adjustable or can be adjusted with links where you can load or unload one side of the car versus the other. Especially if you have a heavy corner, you can offset that corner with an adjustable sway bar and so on and so forth. So this is my recommendation. This is what I say when you should have sway bars because it isn't just preventing the rolling of your chassis, it's keeping your geometry in check throughout the corner. Because while you're loading up this side of the car, the sway bar is loading up the other side of the chassis as well, trying to maintain the grip that it's available in the car. So in summary, going over everything that we just talked about, roll center is one of those characteristics of geometry that is getting a little bit deeper into how complex these systems are and how they relate to drifting. There's very little data on how this stuff plays a role in drifting, and a lot of it is opinionated or theorized based off of not a whole lot of information. Being a driver myself, understanding the geometry and how it works, I was able to, over the years, manipulate my suspension and change things and adjust things. So again, this video was only about front suspension. Roll center and all these other aspects have a completely different role in rear suspension and they also have a completely different way of measuring when you're using double wishbone suspension which we may end up doing just an entire other series on double wishbone since the principle of measuring is the same instead of a perpendicular angle here uh, to the kingpin inclination angle you would actually draw a line through the outer ball joint and inner ball joint on the upper control arm and that would give you your angle of intersection and so on so Thank you for watching our episode on Roll Center. Um, I know there was a lot of talking, so it really requires you to listen rather than look or, or look for text or whatever, maybe put on subtitles or something and then you can read it. But uh, yeah, this is a simple display. Roll Center really requires two parts of the car, so we're gonna do our best to visualize that, or we did do our best to visualize that because Jack's gonna be editing it and we're gonna see how it looks. Come and watch episode five, where we will be talking about something really cool. I'm not sure what's next in my in my list because I made a list. Watch us on the next episode. We touched on a couple of things that we didn't go into detail on that you will be able to see in further episodes. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell button. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you learned anything and uh, let us know what you want to see and learn about in next videos. That's it. Over and out.